All right, so here we have this table that's giving some of the values for this continuous, fu this continuous function f, and it says f is increasing over this closed interval from zero to three. So which of these could be the value of the integral from zero to three of f of x dx? Okay, so um, a strategy that I, I would use is to um, kind of have a, a visual, you know, of what this is, of what this um, function looks like. So let's draw a sketch as I love pictures. Let's look at every point five. One, two, three. And at so zero, zero, point five, four. Point five or one ten. One point five eighteen. Two twenty eight. Two point five forty. I'm not drawing a scale. Let's just keep that in mind. And then 354. Let's say it's way up here. 354. And so we're told it's increasing over this interval and it's continuous. So we can kind of use a, a trapezoidal rule approximation to get an idea of what this total error would be based on these points. So we can, you know, draw this area broken down into these. Trapezoids. And then calculate the area of those trapezoids and get an idea of the total area. So remember the area of the trapezoid is one half base times one half of the bases added together um, times the height. So um for the first one, this would be so all these have, all these have a, have a height of 0.5. Just to keep it simple. This is 0.5. That's 0 0.5, that's 0 0.5. All these are 0 0.5. Let me just draw, let me just write up the area of the trapezoid. One half B1 plus B2 times the height. So um, just the average of the Y values um, divided by, the average of the Y values divided by two, or the sum of the Y values divided by two, and um, multiply by 0.5. So the first one would be zero plus four over two. And all of those are gonna be multiplied by 0.5, so I'm gonna factor out the 0.5. That'll be the first one. The second one will be four plus 10, oops, plus, Four plus ten over two. The next one will be ten plus eighteen over two. The next one will be eighteen plus twenty eight over two. The next one will be 28 plus 40 over two plus the last one, which will be 40 plus 54 over two. Luckily you have your calculator, you can add all these up. So this will just come out to be 0.5 times two plus Two plus seven plus nine, no, 10 plus 18, 28 plus 14 plus 28, 38, 48, 46 plus 23 plus 34 plus 46. Let's see what we get. Luckily, you get 
22 plus 7 plus 14 plus 23 plus 34 plus 46. And then divided by 2. So I get about 63. So the closest approximation looks like it would be 62. That would be the best guess. So the answer is B. All right, 84. Okay, so which of these statements is true about this function, f of x shown here? So you can see we have a hole at a comma two. Then we have a closed dot at a comma one. So let's see which of these would be true. f of a equals two. f of a is not equal to two because f of a equals one. That's not true. F is continuous at x equals a. It is not continuous because that there's a hole there. By definition, that's the point of this continuity. C, the limit as x approaches a is equal to one. No, the limit as x approaches a would be equal to two. So the answer would actually be D. Because as x, as x approaches a from the right side and the left side, it approaches that dot, which is at two. The answer is going to be B. Okay, 85. The particle moves along the x-axis so that at time t is greater than or equal to zero, its position is given by x of t equals the cosine of the square root of t. What is the velocity of the particle at the first instance the particle is at the origin? Okay, so we want to essentially, so the derivative of position, remember, the derivative of position x prime of t is velocity. You can say it's v of t. So we want to essentially find what is v of t when you know the positions at the origin so we want to see when is the position of when is the position um equal to zero so when is x of t equal to zero when x of t equals to zero we just have to look at the slope of the tangent line so let's go ahead and scrap that and we can analyze it Using graphing technology. Cosine of the square root of x. Okay, so let's see, let's look where that zero is. That's when the position is zero. I mean, that's when um, the particles at the origin. Would be zero units away from, you know, I guess the point zero. Let's analyze the graph and see where that zero is. The zero is at 2.47. We want to find x prime of 2.47. So you can so you can either calculate this by you know by hand, by you know, by just Find the derivative function and calculate the value of the derivative. But this calculator has even um, a derivative feature. Be very nice. You go to analyze graph, you can find a dy dx at a specific point. You want to find it, it should land right about. Right at the or, or right when it equals zero, we get we have a derivative of negative 0.318. So then the answer will be C. Okay. 86. F prime of t is positive for all x and f double prime of t is negative for all x. What could be the, what could, um, what you need to be the table of for f, for f. We were given that f prime is positive and that f double prime is negative. 
So if f prime is positive, that means that the function is increasing. But if f double prime is negative, that means the, the rate of increase is decreasing. So we want to see, like, we, we want to make sure that f is increasing first. But we also want to see that the, the rate of increasing is, is um, decreasing. This is kind of funny, but look, let's first look at the graphs where f is increasing. So here you see it's going, it's going down by one and down by two. So it's not going to be a. Here it's the same. All, all the f values are the same. So it's not going to be b. Okay, so here it's increasing. It's increasing by one and then by one. So here the here f prime of x is constant. f prime of x is positive, but f prime of x is always equal to one. So it's not c. d, um, the function goes up by one, then it goes up by two. So it's increasing, but the function or the, f, the derivative is also increasing. So this would be where f double prime is positive as well. So it's not d, so we can already say it's e, but let's look at e. So this goes up by two first, then from six to seven, it goes up by one. So the function is increasing, so it satisfies f prime of x more than zero, but the rate of increase is decreasing. The c goes up by two, then by one. So it's slowing down. Um, so the answer is e. All right, so there you go. I hope that helps. Good luck.